Hello everyone, welcome to Pikeville History Moments, where we talk about the history and heritage of Pikeville, Kentucky and the surrounding area. Today, we'll learn about the Day and Night National Bank of Pikeville, an innovative bank built in the 1920s. Later, we'll speculate about what may have been going on behind the scenes when the business ended. Sometimes, history is hiding in plain sight. When walking through downtown Pikeville, an observant pedestrian may just get a glimpse into the past. On the corner of Main and Division Streets, near the courthouse, there's a two-story building that has been standing there, essentially unchanged, for nearly a century. Engraved over each entrance is the word bank and the numbers 19 and 27. That's the year the headquarters of the Day and Night Bank was constructed. Now we have to go back a few more years for the beginning of the story. The Big Sandy News reported in December of 1920 that the Citizens Day and Night Bank had been capitalized by local businessmen. Among those were James and Tom Hatcher. The bank was opened the following year under a slightly different name, the Day and Night National Bank of Pikeville. Being a national bank meant the bank could print money, but they only did this in 1929 when they printed five, 10, and $20 bills. In 2009, a currency expert estimated the value of the $10 note at between $10 and $15,000. There had been a day and night bank in Huntington, West Virginia from 1912 to 1919, and its closing time was typically 10 p.m. By contrast, almost all banks of the time closed by mid-afternoon. It's likely that the Huntington Bank inspired the creation of the one in Pikeville, so it likely kept similar hours. It was claimed at the time that it was the first day and night bank in the country to be chartered as a national bank. It appears the bank prospered until the stock market crash of 1929 and the Great Depression that followed. Nearly four in 10 banks across the country closed between 1930 and 1934. The day and night bank avoided outright collapse by merging with Pikeville National Bank. This was announced in December of 1930. Along with the acquisition of the Bank of Hellier around the same time, thus saving depositors funds from loss, these acquisitions also made Pikeville National one of the largest financial institutions in Eastern Kentucky. In the years since, Pikeville National continued to acquire other banks. Pikeville National eventually became Community Trust Bank, which is now the second largest bank domiciled in Kentucky. It is still headquartered in Pikeville. Although the bank business was gone, the building remained. It was originally meant to be a five-story building, but only the first floor was initially constructed using sandstone as the building material. A second story in brick was added sometime later. Many businesses have operated in the building in the decades since. A pharmacy operated there in the 50s, and it housed the Smart Shop, a clothing store, in the early 80s. More recently, professional services have been the norm. The original bank vault was removed in 2011. While the interior has been altered time and time again, some of the original features are still present. We'd like to thank local attorney Justin Hamilton for allowing us to get a look inside. Now there's been some rank speculation on the bank's history. As we mentioned, the bank merged with Pikeville National Bank, thus avoiding a total collapse. But why would Pikeville National want a failing bank? Well, they did have assets and they still had prominent investors such as the Hatchers. 
It turns out that they had an opportunity to get a quick cash infusion. The Pike County government owed the bank about $150,000. Piecing together reports, it appears that the county wanted to issue 20-year bonds to pay this off, but attorneys didn't believe the law allowed bonds to be issued for that purpose. So the bank filed a friendly lawsuit. The thinking was that the county could issue the bonds if a court ordered them to do so. The local court initially declined, but following an appeals court ruling, Judge R. Monroe Fields of the Pike Circuit Court ordered the county to issue the bonds in September of 1930. The bank merger went through just three months later. Again, this is speculation but it seems plausible, at least, that this extra cash could have been the key to completing the deal. Perhaps the deal was ready to go, pending the court ruling. If that was the case, then would the merger have happened had the court ruled the other way? Of course, it's doubtful that we'll ever know for sure. Thank you for watching Pikeville History Moments. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe, or click on the link to our website at visitpikeville.com. If you know of any other businesses that have operated in the day and night bank building, please leave us a comment and let us know.